everybody, I got a book haul. <laughs> Big surprise. Haven't had one of those in a while. Note the sarcasm. <laughs> um, I got lucky at the uh, Little Free Library tonight. And I also have a couple things that I bought over the last month or so. Not a ton compared to my previous book haul. And of course I'm throwing them on the floor. Because why wouldn't I? That's how my life works. Okay, let's start with this one since it's the one that decided to try to escape. This is Tales from the Night Side by Simon R. Green. It's blurred by Jim Butcher, of the author of the Dresden Files, which I loved the Dresden Files until they got to the last couple books where it was more about the Fae than the vampires and stuff. I'm not a big fan of Fae, so anyway. Uh, he says it's a macabre and thoroughly entertaining world. And it's just all um, blurbs on the back. Oh, I guess it's a whole long series, though. So how far into the series is this one? Welcome to the night side. It's the secret heart of London beating to its own rhythm, rhythm pumping life blood through veins of its streets and alleys hidden in eternal darkness where creatures of the night congregate and where the sun is afraid to shine. That sounds right up my alley. Tales from the Nightside presents ten macabre mysteries that shine a dim beam into the neighborhood's darkest corners to reveal things that should never come to light. I wonder if these are like um, short stories that go in between the novels kind of a deal. Uh, yeah, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... 10, 11, 12 books listed here. <laughs> of course, I would pick one up that's got 12 other books ahead of it. Well, perhaps I will um, take a look. One of them is called The Bride Wore Black Leather. That sounds interesting. Uh, yeah. I think it sounds like something I might enjoy. If it's anything even remotely like the Dresden Files, I will probably enter be entertained by it. So we'll look and see what I come up with. I'm going to guess they probably got it from Dollar Tree based on the sticker on the back. <laughs> I can show you why in just a few minutes. This one is called Sarah's Key. I don't know anything about it. Um, Paris, July 1942. Sarah, a 10-year-old girl, is taken with her parents by the French police as they go door-to-door -door arresting Jewish families in the middle of the night. Desperate to protect her younger brother, Sarah locks him in a bedroom cupboard, their secret hiding place, and promises to come back for him as soon as they are released. Sixty years later, Sarah's story intertwines with that of Julia Jarmond, an American journalist investigating the Roundup. In her research, Julia stumbles onto a trail of secrets that link her to Sarah and to questions about her own romantic future. Huh. So, does that make it historical romance? It's definitely historical. And it sounds like it's set during like World War II because of being 1942 and Holocaust stuff. This might work for um, Book Two Bit War or whatever it's called that they're doing in July, which is a big event that a lot of booktubers are participating in. Uh, this one is called Mosquito Land. I've heard of this one, but I don't know what it's about. <laughs> Mim Malone is not okay. Her parents split up, her dad remarried and dragged her to Mississippi. And she finds out her mom is sick back in Ohio. So Mim picks up her life and catches a Greyhound bus to Cleveland. Oh, poor thing, going to Cleveland. Uh, the journey takes some unexpected and hilarious turns as Mim encounters a couple of very eccentric traveling companions from all over the map. 
and what begins as a simple road trip turns out to be exactly what Mim needs to confront her own fears and define for herself what it truly means to be okay. Well, that might be fun. I'm in southern Ohio, not northern Ohio, like Cleveland, but I've been in the Cleveland area a lot, and it's not for me. Or at least the parts I've been in haven't been for me. Uh, this one's called The Barefoot Bandit, The True Tale of Colton Harris Moore, New American Outlaw. Uh, the Barefoot Bandit tells the riveting true story of Colton Harris Moore, America's 21st century outlaw. Born into a poor family, marred by alcohol abuse, Colt had the local sheriff after him before the age of 10. Colt survived by breaking into homes to forage for food and learned to evade the police by melting into the Pacific Northwest wilds. As a teenager, he escalated to stealing cars, boats, and identities. An extensive manhunt finally caught Colt, but he escaped from juvenile prison and fled to nearby Orcas Island where he assured his place alongside outlaw legends such as D.B. Cooper by stealing an airplane without ever having a formal flight lesson. And that was just the beginning. Oh, now that sounds interesting! Um, what's the, the dude, the catch-me-if-you-can guy? Sounds like he's on par with that, maybe? This also has the same sticker, so I'm wondering if this was also like a Dollar Tree special that made its way to, um, made its way to the Little Free Library. Okay, this one is Little House on Rocky Ridge by... Roger Lee McBride. Um, there's a series of Little House books that came out well after the original series was published. Uh, this is copyright 1993. Um, so I guess it continues the story of Laura Ingalls Wilder and her family. I haven't read any of these, so I'm kind of curious. Back when I was like in third grade, we did the whole Little House series, the original Laura Ingalls Wilder series, um, in school. Our teacher read them to us throughout the school year. So we did the whole series. And then we did Pioneer Day, where we got to... Um, dress up and do pioneer-ish activities. This is The Merc and Midnight Hour by Jane Nickerson. A southern girl, a wounded soldier, a chilling force deep in the forest. All collide at night's darkest hour. That sounds interesting to me. And again, it's got that same sticker, so oh, I bet these are from Dollar Tree. Not, a, not that that's an issue. I mean, I a couple of the ones I've got in my stack are from there. Uh, this is The Duff. I loved the movie. I thought, oh, I ought to read the book. 17-year-old uh, Bianca Piper may not be the prettiest girl in her high school, but she has a loyal group of friends, a biting wit, and a spot-on BS detector. She's also too smart to fall for the charms of man-slut and slimy school hottie Wesley Rush, who calls Bianca the Duff, the designated ugly fat friend of her crew. But things aren't so great at home, and Bianca, desperate for distraction, ends up kissing Wesley. Worse, she likes it. Eager for escape, Bianca throws herself into a closeted enemies with benefits relationship with him. Until it all goes horribly awry. It turns out Wesley isn't such a bad listener, and his life is pretty screwed up too. Suddenly, Bianca realizes with absolute horror that she's falling for the guy she thought she hated more than anyone. Yeah, it was a fun movie. So, I thought, yeah, I'll pick that up and give it a go. Oh, wait, these aren't from Dollar Tree. These are from Five Below. I got confused. I know I've got books from the Dollar Tree sitting here somewhere. 
Did I haul them yet? I don't know. Um, this one is called Ghost Stories by M.R. James. These are like Victorian era. Um, M.R. James is a pretty well-known short story writer of gothic and, and ghost stories and that kind of thing. And then I got Cooking Anime and the unofficial Studio Ghibli cookbook. Because, you know, cookbooks, anime, yeah, things I like. Um... Now, the Studio Ghibli one is stuff inspired by the films. It's not, like, actually stuff from the films. Which I was a little disappointed in that aspect of it. But it still looks and sounds like fun, so... Ooh, that looks good. <laughs> Skillet bacon and eggs. Yeah. I like bacon and eggs. A Witch's Secret to Magical Fluffy Pancakes. I'm going to guess that's probably inspired by Kiki's Delivery Service. I love pancakes. They, they're a, a thing I enjoy, but I don't like making them. Se seaside Seafood Sashimi Platter. That's hard to say. That looks good. I had a couple pieces of sushi tonight. We went into Gallipolis for dinner um, to the China One Buffet, and they advertise that they've got sushi. They had one little tray that had a couple pieces of sushi on it, and I was just like, really? But then we got there at like 7.30, and they close at 9, I think, so. Uh, okay, this one tells you which anime it's based on. These are after practice Nikuman, which are like a dumpling. Oh, this one's from Food Wars. I really want to watch Food Wars. I understand it's also a manga, and that the manga has recipes on the back cover. Yes, please. I'm going to have to start collecting that now. If anybody wants to start sending me food wars, just kidding. <laughs> I don't expect my viewers to send me anything. Kiki's chocolate cake. And it's got a picture of Kiki on her broom. That's cute. Panda shaved ice parfait. Now that is adorable. Of course, it's just a drawing. I wish it was a photo. From Polar Bear Cafe, Season 1, Episode 5. Panda gets enthusiastic slash everyone's parfait. Huh. That is super cute. Totoro! From my neighbor Totoro. Totoro Latte Art. <laughs> my neighbor Totoro, that's a super cute one. Okay, and the last two things I've picked up tonight at Walmart, and they're both coloring books. I have Disney Villains. My favorite right there, Miss Ursula. And then Kawaii Tarot coloring book. And it cracked me up that, um, let me find it. Oh, I didn't see that. The lovers are bunnies. <laughs> Where did it go? Was it after that one? Yeah, it was after that. Death is a little skeleton guy riding on like a elephant or mammoth or something to the effect. I thought that was funny. But then, not sure how to feel about this one. The devil is a bat. Devil, devil bat, seriously? Bats are awesome. <laughs> some of these look super cute. I think this is going to be a fun one to color. Although some of these are awfully small and detailed. I mean, that's going to be rough to color. <laughs> Oh, 
what exactly is that animal supposed to be? It's got like bat wings, but it's got like two horns and a weird tail. Well, I don't know what that's supposed to be. Any idea what that's supposed to be? The five of coins? No idea. Oh, hedgehogs, unicorns, squirrels, whales, octopus, owls, lots of different cat ones. This is going to be a fun one, and it's going to take some time to color. But I figured I'd put these in my work bag, and I'll kind of keep these to myself until I get the ones I want to do done. I mean, because these were kind of expensive. The... Kawaii one was eleven sixty eight and the Disney one was nine ninety eight. I'm like, ooh, that's a little expensive to just leave for anybody to do whatever they want, you know. But there's several different Ursula ones in here. And of course, can I turn to one? No. Cruella de Vil. The Evil Queen and the Witch from Snow White couple of them in here. Mad Madam Mim. <laughs> yeah, I think this is going to be fun to color. Got the hyenas from um, Lion King. There's the magic mirror on the wall. There's Ursula. Two different Ursulas. We got Ursula and then we got the fake human Ursula looking in the mirror reflecting the octopus Ursula. Anyway, that's the book haul for tonight. Um, I thought Neko Fluttershy was going to come back down so we could do a different video, but he went to his room and never came back. So I'm guessing that means he's tired and doesn't want to fool with this nonsense. I gotta work the next three nights, so yeah, had a night off finally. <laughs> we had a rough night at work last night, so it was nice having the day to just chill, sleep, you know, then go out and get something to eat, because I just did not feel like cooking. So, anyway, I think I get off Let's see, I work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm off from like 8 a.m. Friday morning until midnight Monday. So I work like midnight to 8 a.m. Monday. Because, you know, it's Memorial Day and of course I have to work the holiday because I work every stinking holiday. So far. <laughs> They're like, if you work Memorial Day, you, get, you can have 4th of July off. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> considering the last time they told me I had the weekend off they gave they told me I had Thursday and Friday but I worked until 8 a.m. Thursday I'd already put in a full eight hour day on Thursday so I didn't get Thursday off I got that Friday off and then I had to work like 8 to 8 that following Saturday and I'm like so my weekend was one day why does everybody else get like a three day weekend and I get one day but this time, I'm getting the full weekend, so... Yay! <laughs> getting a little tired of... We're short-staffed! Yes, we know! But you're also scheduling us weird. And then you read the schedule wrong, thinking that we're off when we're really working, because you're putting it midnight to 8 a.m. as the end of Wednesday instead of the beginning of Thursday. So you're looking at it as I'm working Wednesday when it really goes on Thursday's day. We have to fill it out as Thursday so on our timesheet. So it's like, if we could get the person doing the schedule to read it the same way we do, it would make a whole lot of difference. But whatever. Midnight is a tricky thing. Because, yeah, I'm getting up on that day, but I'm working the next morning so whatever it is what it is 
hopefully there, we have a different person starting to, to do the schedule now so hopefully it'll get fixed they told us it'd get fixed yeah, whatever anyway that's that has nothing to do with the whole book thing so that was my book haul how many books was that two five six seven eight nine 11, 12, 12, I guess, I think, maybe, close enough, um, have you read any of these, are they any good, <laughs> a lot of them seem pretty random, so I don't know what they're going to be like, um, I was pulling them out of the thing after 11 o'clock at night, so it's hard to tell what they actually are I mean we're just about to turn to midnight now so yeah it just clicked to midnight on the clock so um I, I didn't even get to read the descriptions until I got home so on camera <laughs> so you know as much as I do about them unless you've actually read them before um so I'm gonna get out of here let you go remember to do all the YouTube things comment like share subscribe Ring the bell icon to be notified of future uploads should the YouTube gods deem it worthy. And we will see you in the next one, which hopefully will be a taste test because I got a whole stack of stuff sitting there that needs to be eaten. <laughs> I'm not exactly hungry right now, but I thought that's what we were going to do because that would have been our dessert. And well, he never came back. So um, maybe this weekend we'll get some videos done <laughs> I'm hoping that we'll be able to go um, since I'm off the whole weekend get to go to the movies again I, we're still trying to get to go see Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and Little Mermaid comes out Friday and I really want to see that I don't understand why people are getting so bent out of shape over the fact that the mermaid is black what mermaids can't be more than Caucasian why not I don't understand <laughs> I don't just like uh, take your racist ideas and shove them because there's no reason why a mermaid can't be multiracial or whatever why can't we have ethnic mermaids Maybe she's from a different part of the ocean. Who knows? I don't have a problem with it. I think people who do are kind of, you know, not great. Oh, good. I don't have to take a picture of the receipt. Woohoo! Our shopping trip to Walmart. Um, I got my Walmart account linked back to Ibotta and so it automatically did my offers for me so now I don't have to take pictures of the receipt to submit it anymore I only have to do that for fetch <laughs> anyway we'll see you in the next one whatever it may be bye bye